Going to have a huge audience today. We're going to be all talking about mastering retouching. And uh, we're going to go in depth about the our retouching masterclass. And uh, if you guys don't know me, I'm a celebrity fashion photographer, TV director, executive producer, and host of the TV show Great Escapes that airs on CBS, Kevin Michael Schmitz. And uh, my entire life is around influencing photographers, innovating photographers, giving them everything they need to do to take it to the highest level of their photographic potential. And although most of our webinars are really heavy on the production side, shooting supermodels, shooting fashion, creating just mind-blowing photographic images and all aspects from the actual production side, I also wanted to showcase you guys uh, how to maximize retouching. Now, as you guys are all jumping on, um, we're going to have a huge audience today. We're going to have hundreds of, um, of uh, guests here. I also wanted to showcase um, some of the content that we are going to be uh, getting to select from. So whether it's from uh, some of our epic shoots in New York with these supermodels to shoots out in the desert in Las Vegas, we're going to be having you guys, the audience, selecting which pictures we're going to be retouching on this webinar. So we're going to do it live. Everything is 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 going to be awesome and live and responsive to you guys. Um, and uh, to give you an idea of the kind of productions we do, this was actually shot in New York with us at our last New York fashion photography photographic workshop experience um, we shot with top models that have been in vogue harper's bazaar vanity fair and um, we are going to be um, when we when it comes down to the actual master class um, on retouching um, today we're going to give you a showcase kind of a, a view into some of my strategies some of my secret techniques uh, and then we're also going to have a um, an opportunity for you guys if you do want to we're going to have a super intensive five hour photographic retouching workshop experience on April 9th. And um, that is something that um, I, I do highly recommend, especially for those of you re that really want to refine your retouching and take it to the next level. Um, that's very important to me um, because you know what? I'm here to help innovate and help photographers on the production side and give them the opportunity to photograph and film the greatest uh, content they've ever shot in their entire lifetime. But in addition to that, what we also notice is that no matter how great the photographs are, no matter how great the supermodels are, we oftentimes have photographers that miss the mark on the retouching side. Uh, so the retouching is key and critical to your photography to make it at the highest level of your potential. Because you know what? It all is associated with your photographic brand and what you want to show to that audience, whether it's a photographic client, say you're a fashion photographer, whether you're a wedding photographer, portrait photographer, or even a landscape photographer. Um, in fact, during our um, master class that we're going to be having um, coming up as well, uh, we're going to go in depth about fashion photography. We're going to be retouching portraiture. Uh, we're going to be retouching um, wedding, uh, lifestyle, and landscape photography and how to do that at the highest level to give you guys some secret strategies of how to make your images absolutely amazing. Um, now, I, I have my experience, you know, I did my bachelor's, my MFA to be a professor of photography, and I have all this experience in retouching. And that's why, um, you know, I have become a, a very, very adept a master at retouching, but I'm also going to be bringing on some experts um, at the, the next experience uh, where they are gurus, where that's all they literally do is retouch every day, day in and day out. So guys, um, now before we get it, we're going to select the images. I'm going to have you, the audience, select which images we're going to retouch today. I'm going to showcase the actual photo shoot that all these images were shot at. Uh, so um, this is this next video is actually from the actual shoot. Um, and this gives you an idea of the, the production. Uh, we shot this at our last Las Vegas fashion photography workshop out on location, out in the desert. Mind blowing experience. We had supermodels from Vogue, Vanity Fair. Uh, Harper's Bazaar, Elle magazine, unbelievable top talent to start with uh, that had amazing faces and you know beautiful skin so that really helps especially with the retouching uh, but also we brought in camels we had these amazing like eagle uh, gold eagle suits we brought in a $50,000 owl we brought in falcons we brought in rearing horses I mean it was out of this world so this is the production you guys the audience is going to be are going to be selecting images from for today so 
If you guys see anything in here that you like, um, let me know because uh, I'm gonna then go into Bridge and we're gonna hand pick the best of the best images uh, that you want me to start working on. And then we're gonna do it live. I wanna have some Q&A. I want you guys to tell me uh, what which images, um, uh, you know, get you excited but also what type of questions you might have on retouching techniques and what we can do to help make you a better retoucher because that's what this is all about very very important to me uh to make sure that you guys uh can master that all right so um now without further ado i'm going to bring on um the images themselves and i want you guys to select um now oftentimes you know, I like to, um, I'm using, of course, Photoshop um, uh, 22, uh, 2022, but I'm also going to be um, showing, I'm going to be looking through these images. Uh, I often like Bridge. I know a lot of photographers um, use Lightroom and, you know, different um, uh, different avenues, but I personally have always been a fan of Bridge, but of course, it's totally up to you. Um, but in Bridge, uh, when I'm selecting pictures, I generally have my kind of final finals that I have now selected through. And um, and when I say selected, it's it's essentially what I do is photo editing, just like I'm a photo editor from a magazine. Now, I'm going to be selecting pictures here, and I want you guys to tell me, the audience, I want you guys to tell me which images of these uh, do you, are you interested in having me retouch? So these are all images straight out of that photo shoot that we just went through. Um, and it's a great opportunity for you guys as the audience to, to chime in and tell me. So um, in the, um, uh, go ahead and uh, in the chat or actually even better yet in the Q and A, if you guys can tell me which of these pictures uh, and you can actually even see their file numbers that you wanna start with. You know, me personally, I'm in love with one of these with the dappled horse. These are straight out of camera, amazing images. And these are actually all photographed from attendees of the workshop series. I think these images specifically were from Mike Wylett, um, who not only has he attended like six of our workshops, but he's also coming up, I think coming to the next three, uh, including Las Vegas, uh, again, because he had such an amazing experience. So um, as you guys kind of browse through here and take a look, see, we've got epic images of camels. We have the amazing images um, with the golden eagle. And, um, and I absolutely love this. So um, as you guys can take a look, see at these images and I'll just do, I'll just kind of do a round through here. And if you guys have any favorites, please message them in the chat. Let me know in the chat or the Q and A, which images are the ones that you want me to start retouching from so that I can retouch the images you want me to retouch. Now, of course, they're all, th these images are all with this um, similar, uh, same model. These ones have some different models. These are a little bit more complex. Um, but uh, I think that for the sake of this, I'd love to do stuff with some really in-depth skin retouching and master skin retouching, also color correction, which is something that as a photographer, I would say 98% of photographers and retouchers that I know completely miss the mark with color correction. And it's something that I do want to touch on today because when I say color correction, I don't mean adjusting color within the entire image. What I'm talking about is real color correction where I'm adjusting the color in every single part of color in the image, making the yellows more yellow, the golds more gold, the reds more red, the blues more blue. And I'm creating what we would call innate contrast within the image, okay? So if you guys have any favorites as I'm browsing through here, you let me know which one, uh, which images to start with so we can finally get off the bat and actually retouch an image. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead right now. And if you guys haven't, uh, selected already. Of course, we have a lot of different options. I, I think just about everybody is writing a different file number, which is kind of interesting um, in the Q&A. Uh, let's see what you guys say in the chat. Um, okay, so we have a lot of uh, um, a lot of different perspectives. <laughs> All right, this is great. Um, so please, uh, you guys vote on that or write it up in the chat so we know which one is going to be the image uh, for you guys to start with. Uh, so uh, it looks like we've got some, um, uh, a lot, of, uh, we have some people saying 4246. Uh, we have some with, um, that want 4454. Okay, so some eagle wings um, or some stuff with the horse. All right, let me know guys, because I definitely want to know uh, which image gets you the most excited then that you want to also watch me uh, retouch. 
And also close-up skin retouching, Olive, uh, Oliver, uh, thanks. I think that's great. I think that's a grand idea, uh, doing some close-up skin retouching. All right. So, um, all right, guys. So we have a lot of votes for 4246 and 5595. Um, okay, so 5595 is this with the gold and 4246 is this one off the bat. Okay, great, guys. Um, all right. So, um, all right, we've got a lot of that. Well, if we have enough time, well, maybe we'll do both. <laughs> so, uh, but it comes down to those uh, two pictures. Um, all right, so let's start off then with the gold, because I think that this is this is really fabulous. Um, and I had a lot of people uh, voting for the gold. So, um, okay. All right, guys. Um, so 42, 46. Okay. I don't know. These are really great. 5595. Okay. Let's start with 5595. And um, now, of course, I'm going to be opening this. Um, generally, this is going to be all shot as a raw image. But since this came from one of my photographers that attended, he put this as a JPEG. But generally, this would be opened as a raw. And I would open this in camera raw, make any adjustments initially. Now, in this case, I'm generally not going to do too much uh, to this in camera raw unless it really badly needed it. Okay. But I am going to open it in camera raw, whether it's a raw file or JPEG, but of course, guys, just for the sake of knowledge, everything is going to be shot in raw originally at the highest resolution your camera can handle, you know, so I'm going to be shooting um, with, I personally shoot with a Canon R5. So it's a, you know, very high resolution, um, you know, uh, um, uh, digital camera that's, that's got, it shoots everything mirrorless and I absolutely love it. And I have it because it also shoots in 8K. Um, but uh, this, uh, this image was all shot by um, Mike Wylett. Now, one thing I do like to do is as far as the color space, now I'm going to adjust the color space. I would say that's the one thing here. I generally put, put this on sRGB. Um, I tend to like sRGB, not Adobe 1998, just because that color space tends to be the closest color space to both printing as well as um, the web. So I really, really do love sRGB and that's what I like to um, work in. All right, so, and then I can of course make any adjustments here, but in this case, I'm actually gonna keep it just as it is, just uh, um, uh, adjusting the color space and that's it. So um, now I'm, I'm gonna open this up in Photoshop. And, um, and this is fun because we're going to be doing this live experience on here. And by the way, guys, if you are interested and you love what you're seeing here, um, we do have uh, an epic workshop coming up where you know we're going to touch on this today. We're going to go in depth. We're going to reveal some secrets. But if you want a super intensive uh, retouching workshop where it's not going to be just me, but also some of our um, elite experts. So I bring, I'm gonna bring in a couple of world-class retouching experts. We're gonna retouch high-end landscape photography. We're gonna retouch wedding, portrait, fashion, um, beauty. We're gonna be doing basically every major category in photography. We're gonna be retouching images and showcasing strategies during that intensive workshop. Highly recommend it. It's coming up on April 9th. It's 1295. Um, but it's all, um, if you guys enroll today, you actually get a discount of $300. So it's only $9.95. Um, so I just put that in the chat. So if you guys are interested, definitely take advantage of that. Uh, we usually have anywhere from 30 to 50 photographers um, attend these virtual workshops. Um, so it's it's amazing. And what we'll do is we, we can actually take images from the attendees and retouch your images live during the workshop. So if your images get selected, so pretty awesome experience, just like we're doing right now, uh, retouching one of our attendees, Mike Wylett, which is pretty fantastic. Okay, so one of the things I'm going to first start doing here is I'm going to like zoom in right to the face because this is essentially the meat of the image. All right. Now, of course, this model is world class. Her name is Valena. She's a top model. She's been in Harper's Bazaar. Um, she's been in um, in Vogue. She's been in um, Vanity Fair. She's been in Elle. She's a she's a major, major top model. And um, because of that, it's like, OK, well, I need to make sure that uh, she is going to have the most perfect face uh, when it comes out, because I'm also whether I'm shooting a celebrity or whether I'm shooting a top fashion model. I want to make sure that all the details look perfect. However, I want her to look as flawless and beautiful as possible without having it look over retouched. Okay. And this is critically important. I don't want this to be over retouched. And what I mean by that is I don't want the face to be like over smooth. I don't want it to look, um, you know, like kind of overdone or hyper, 
um, uh, hyper real. I know a lot of my attendees, you know, they, they shoot these amazing images in the workshops, but then when it comes to retouching them, they kind of go over the top of the retouching and it doesn't, it doesn't look as strong because it's not natural. Um, this day and age, I mean, it's 2022, um, retouching is, it's, it's a true art form and it has to be just done enough to make it look perfect, but yet real. So we have to make sure that everything looks authentic. That's what we're looking for is authenticity. That's absolutely critically important. And that's what we're going to be showcasing today, how to make an authentic image um, look amazing. And oftentimes, you know, I have to admit a lot of my photographers that take our workshops, their images right out of camera look and, and actually end up looking better than what they, they shot or what, um, their final image that they retouch because they're retouching missed the mark. So that's why uh, those of you who are attendees of my workshops, which many of you are on right now, I want you to pay attention to this in depth. And I want you guys to maximize um, your retouching with this strategy because it's absolutely vital. Now, um, and if you guys have any questions, of course, along the way, please, please, please put it in the chat. We want to hear it. And I'm sorry, put it in the Q&A uh, in the chat. It's going to get lost. If you put it in the Q&A, that way I can answer it and I can go through and um, explain uh, more in detail if you guys want more information. And if you guys are interested, obviously, in attending the intensive workshop, it's going to be five hours. It's going to be you and me, as well as some of our expert panelists. And it's going to be fantastic really exciting experience. Um, and you will get out of that becoming like an expert world-class retoucher right, when it's all said and done. So um, very, very, very important um, that you guys actually experience that. Okay. Um, now, uh, the first thing then after I like zoom into the face, um, I also, I'm, I'm, I'm paying attention to a couple things here, right? Now I want to clear out my, um, uh, some of my, uh, I, I like having my history available. That's, that's great in case I need it. Uh, but most importantly, we're looking at our background layer. Now I'm gonna be, um, first of all, uh, duplicating this. Now, of course, all of the things I'm gonna show you, there are shortcuts for all of them. But if you're not familiar with all the shortcuts, I'm gonna just, I'm literally just gonna walk them through um, using just my cursor. So um, now, of course, uh, I, I like, I personally use both a mouse um, and a Wacom tablet, but personally, I have a little bit of a favor over um, to the mouse. Um, I, I'm not really sure why, but those of you guys who are more of an artist um, and are really great with, a, um, say, with a, a pen, um, the Wacom tablet can be a really, really great methodology too. Okay, so me personally, I don't really like um, having like moles and growths on the model. So the, one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of something like this. So I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to scroll over the area that is essentially on the left side here. Um, we're going to be looking at, uh, generally it comes up as healing brush, but I'm going to go down to the patch tool. I'm going to draw around it, select in the middle of it, and then I'm going to drag it usually a, a little bit diagonal off to one side, so above or below. And you see how that magically disappeared, okay? Now it's absolutely perfect. Do the same thing with a little earlobe, any of these imperfections, we're gonna go through and just remove them. So all I'm doing, I'm using the pass tool to draw around it, and then I'm moving it to an area diagonal to where that is. Um, and this is the best methodology, I would say, to like make something look very authentic and real without overdoing it. Because as soon as we start using the healing brush or we start using the, um, patch uh, the um, clone stamp, it tends to be a little bit, it can, it can easily become a little bit overdone. Okay, so there's a lot of methods here, but this is my favorite. Now, oftentimes a lot of professional retouchers, they do a lot of images at once. They don't wanna spend the time doing this because they feel like it's a little bit tenuous, but to me, this is the best way. I don't wanna just blur out the face and skin. I don't wanna make, I don't wanna take shortcuts. This is not taking a shortcut. This is doing it, um, the correct way. And this is what I do when I, for instance, I just shot a Burberry campaign two weeks ago. Um, I um, also have a, um, a, a $200,000 campaign for another brand coming up on the East Coast. Um, I've got huge campaigns. And when I retouch for those clients, I am very, very careful about how I'm going to make sure the images are going to be as perfect as possible and not overdone because the clients are expecting high level post-production. Whether it's video editing, whether it's retouching, the post-production has to be perfect. So right now I'm on the eye, under the eye. This is very, very 
careful. You got to be very careful here, but I'm selecting this area, moving it around to something kind of similar. And then it just di basically disappears right now. I'm loving this. I'm loving this technique, especially with Belena's face. Um, she already has great skin. So now there's just a few specular things that I'm trying to, to get rid of here um, within this. Right. And, um, and then also there's flyaways. Now, personally, these flyaways don't bother me, but if you want to get rid of them, uh, one of my favorite ways to do it is once again, using this patch tool. Um, and I like to draw around it. Like in this circumstance, we're going to just draw around it, select in the middle, boom, it's gone. Just like magic. Okay. Now we're still working on this background layer and, and I'm sorry, this background copy of the background layer. And I'm actually going to call this facial retouching. And um, just so I can keep track of this, but I'm always going to maintain the original background layer, which is locked also, um, but as my original layer that I'm not going to adjust. And you'll see it at the end because the, it will, will compare what we do in the retouching to what um, the final image looks like. There's a few other issues here, you know, little blemishes or uh, little um, adjustments here that, uh, that I want to fix. And um, we're going to use the same technique, drawing around it with that um, uh, patch tool. And then we're going to select it and then move to the side. Um, and I like to just do this. I'm moving around the image, um, but I'm starting with the face first because it's the most important thing. And if you are pressed for time, obviously the face is the most important. Um, now, lines on the face, same kind of thing. There's a few lines here on the face. I'm going to kind of go along with the line. So I'm going a little bit uh, vertical and then I'm going to select in the middle go off to the side and make sure that it is clean. And this side, I wanna make sure, I wanna make sure it looks really nice and clean here. Um, and, uh, and same thing over here. So there's a few of these, um, now there's a lot more specular um, shadows on this side because uh, the shadows are starting to fall on the on camera left of her face and a same kind of thing. I don't want it to be super harsh. So I'm going through and I'm being very tactical uh, with that patch tool. Um, it's very, very important. Now, of course, I've been doing these photographic experiences, these epic workshops where we shoot these mind blowing images, just like you've been seeing from New York and Vegas and everything um, for the last 13 years. Uh, we used to always do the retouching lessons in the workshop, but we got to the point where the workshop was such a massive production and we, we wanted to make it more about shooting rather than just like retouching and a lot of the business stuff. So we've now moved some of the stuff like retouching and the business side uh, off to um, platforms like this. Um, and that way you guys can still get all the content, but we can still, when you're physically at the workshop, we're gonna maximize shooting time because that to me is the most important thing. Um, but, uh, but again, with the retouching, it is everything. Now, if you guys do hire a retoucher, um, and by the way, guys, uh, before I get to that, here are some more flyaways. I actually like these. I find them looking natural. Um, but again, if we wanted to fix them, um, the easiest way to do it would be to draw around it. And I would start with just the outside here and I'd move into the area joining next. And I would just move down, boom, disappears. And then I would kind of clean up so it matches. Okay, now um, we're gonna then move on to um, area. Actually, it kind of seamlessly moves into that. So there's not a whole lot to do, but um, but if we wanted to get rid of like this long line right here, I'm going to do essentially the same thing. Um, we'll kind of do it in segments and uh, we're going to just move it slightly off to the left. Um, and then we're going to get rid of this, we'll move that. And essentially all I'm doing is just basically moving pixels around. You know, that's that's pretty much what we're doing. I mean, and, and it's, it's, it's essentially if we're going to be um, working on NFTs, it's the same thing. We're just we're developing just a combination of pixels. Um, so if we're going to be moving around this line of hair, same thing, we're going to move it off to the left um, and it's magically disappearing and it's starting to clean this up really, really nicely if, if that was your intention. Um, but again, personally, I do kind of like a little bit of hair in the face. It just makes it look more natural. Um, and uh, OK, so um, now we're looking really good here. Um, I'm, I'm looking pretty happy with a lot of this. Um, of course, there's a little bit of crow's feet and stuff under here. I don't know if I really want to get rid of that too much. Um, but if you did, I'm going to show you how to do that. So um, if we want to get rid of some of the more difficult spots, we'll do um, under eyes. And like I said, I don't know if I really want to do that here. But um, just for the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to uh, show you how I would. OK, so I'd be selecting. I, I'd maybe start from a little bit outside, clear my pathway. And I'm still on the patch tool and we're moving inward, okay? We're moving inward and we're dragging it to the left. 
getting rid of some of these crow's feet. And this way it's smoothing it out. But it almost to me looks a little bit like too forced because we're, um, you know, we're obviously getting rid of these crow's feet, but of course everybody has them in some way. So I don't know if I want to have that completely gone, but if we did, this is how I would do it. Okay. So, um, and if you guys have any questions on this, please ask. I know I have a, um, a bunch of burning questions here as well. Um, and, uh, okay. So, um, uh, Adam Reese, you asked, uh, which workspace are you under? I'm just in the standard Adobe Photoshop workspace, the very standard one. And if it's not standard, I, I usually like to reset my workspace because I like to work in standard. Um, and uh, Jose Duarte uh, asked, um, or Josie Duarte asked, was a reflector or lighting used on location? Oftentimes, yes. Uh, but in this circumstance, um, this image was shot with just pure sunlight. Um, and oftentimes, um, we might be bringing in a bounce from one side. But I think in this circumstance, it was just a harsh, intense, afternoon, beautiful, intense light. When we're doing high fashion, oftentimes that's a really nice method. Okay, so as you can see, we're starting to clean this up and, uh, and we're starting to get rid of some of these crow's feet here um, under the eyes and um, it's starting to kind of look a little bit smoother. Okay, now, um, of course, it, it takes a little bit of work because there's a lot of um, a transition here between the highlights and the shadows, but we're working through all of the, um, the, this area that is a little bit bumpy. So I wanna get rid of kind of the bumpier areas and make it a little bit smoother. Um, now uh, I'm gonna kind of move it on down to here. Uh, we're gonna get into this area kind of near the, the nose. Um, and then when I'm feeling good about it, we're gonna then switch over to the clone stamp. And in um, the clone stamp, uh, I usually only use at the very end of retouching a face. But in this circumstance, we're gonna, I'm just gonna show you for the sake of this, um, how I would do this to a, um, and, I, and if you notice here, I'm switching it to 30% opacity, flow 100%, um, and we are, um, and then I'm, I'm using my um, cursors of like the brackets um, to, uh, to get it go up larger and smaller with the, uh, the cursor here. And then, um, and then also most importantly, the hardness. I like to always keep the hardness at 0%, very important. Always when you're using clone stamp, I recommend using hardness 0%. Otherwise, you have some very, very harsh lines on your brushes. So I want the brush to be very smooth and to, um, to basically uh, integrate really nicely over it. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm clicking option and then clicking again. So it's basically selecting one area and then moving it across. Okay, so um, and I'm working on the current layer here. Um, and then I can do the same thing. So I'm, I'm doing it here, kind of smoothing the transition a little bit, making it look a little bit smoother, you know? But again, I, I'm not totally sold on the idea of uh, getting rid of the crow's feet, but if this is what I was gonna do, I would be working through this. And obviously it's gonna take a little bit of time, but that's the methodology that I would use to really make it nice, look nice and smooth. So it's starting to look a little bit more smooth. So, um, but for the, but you know, my intention, you know, even though we just, uh, I just showed you guys one technique to get rid of the crow's feet. Um, and of course I would smooth this out a little bit more. I'd get rid of some of the bumps like right in here. Um, personally, I kind of like it with a little bit of crow's feet. And if you want something in between, you can always um, uh, essentially uh, bring the layer through. So if I want to do that, we're going to now create a layer mask and we're going to paintbrush through just the area that we want um, revealed. Okay, so um, now I've got uh, this area that I've got. Um, I'm painting through. Um, let's change the opacity to say 30%. And now I am on. And same thing. Modes normal opacity 30%. Flow 100%. Um, and the brush is still at zero hardness. And now I'm going to. Now it's white, so it's a layer mask that's white. So nothing has been drawn through yet. I'm going to switch it to black. Everything that I draw now is going to come through. Okay. So now I'm starting to bring back through some of those crow's feet just a tad. Okay. Under the eye. And this is how, you know, I, I kind of blend the two together. Now, I don't know. I have mixed feelings on that. And if I want to get rid of it some more, um, I switch it back to white and I paint back through, get rid of it a little bit again. Okay. Okay, so that's essentially my techniques now. Um, and great questions, guys. If you have any more of these questions, please um, answer in the, uh, um, or ask them in the Q&A. Um, so, uh, okay, and Tom Cook asks, hey, the cheeks uh, looked a little bit burned out. Are you gonna tackle that? Um, yeah, so there's a couple things. Now, this was shot in raw. 
Uh, so the original raw image um, that, that Mike had shot, I probably would have brought down the exposure a little bit if I had the original raw image. But in this case, I've got the JPEG and it looks like we do have detail. So we could bring it back down if we wanted to. Um, now we're gonna get back to that a little bit later when we get into brightness contrast um, and curves layers. Um, but essentially what I'd be doing is I'm um, creating an adjustment layer with brightness contrast and curves. And we'll do that towards the end though. I'm starting with retouching the skin first. So, um, you know, as I move through, um, same kind of thing here. If I want to go back to retouching uh, under the eye, we're going to then use uh, patch tool. And, um, and we're going to keep moving through uh, this area. Um, now, you know, and, and guys, I want to make sure that um, we're making it still look pure. We're still making it look like it's a super strong um, image that has everything, uh, you know, everything that we want all together. We want it all. We want everything to be um, clean, but we also want to make sure that it looks natural. So again, you know, I want to make sure that it's, they do have some lines under the eye, but we can get rid of it just a little bit. Okay. So um, this kind of brings it back through. All right, guys. Um, and now again, I'm back to the patch tool and I'm moving through and, um, and, I'm, and I want to get rid of any issues that I might have. Um, now, if there's something that I ever make a mistake, right, where it's just like, oh, it doesn't work. I, I mean, I, I haven't really done that yet. But if there's something that I don't really love, then all I do is I tackle my history. OK, so in the history here, I can go back and I can go back a couple things. Right. So I'm jumping back, jumping back, jumping back. And I can go through all these different assets in my history. Oftentimes, though, I set my history history. I think usually in Photoshop defaults to like, I don't know, it's like 20 or so steps. I usually like to have it unlimited or if it doesn't let you do unlimited, then like a thousand. Um, I like to be able to go back anywhere in my history to adjust it. Okay, um, same kind of thing here. I want to match this eye a little bit more. Um, and it's, you know, and this is really high level stuff, guys. So we're doing very advanced, um, very detailed retouching stuff here. Um, I'm going back to the patch tool. We're going to adjust some of this stuff here. And, um, and then I'll go right back into under the eye just a tad. And I want to make sure that it is starting to look a little bit cleaner. And if this, this method doesn't work, we're going to then go move to clone stamping. So it's starting to look a little bit too kind of softened there. So I'm not really loving that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back. I'm going to go back in my history to when we started that. Okay. And then what we can do is take, tackle it another way. So if that's looking a little fake, let's go over to the clone stamp. And we're going back to 30%. And um, we're going to click option, click option click and basically i'm sampling sections from other parts of the under the eye and i'm moving them in and um now so i'm, I'm basically option clicking and this is just slightly softening it just a little bit a little bit smooth creating just a little bit of a nice softer look okay now of course this can you can do this as much or as little as you want but i like to get rid of um a lot of the the bumps and the bumps to me are a little bit distracting. So if we can get just rid of a little bit of the bumps, but we still maintain the eye. Um, and I like kind of some of these little specular parts right here, these little lights, these little um, highlights and shininess in the eye. I'm actually gonna leave that. Areas like this though in the cheek, I wanna get rid of some of these bumps here and I wanna make it just a tad bit smoother. So I'm going back to my clone stamp and I'm smoothing through all of this, okay? And by the way, guys, if you wanna get way more in depth about this and how to retouch a portrait, a wedding, a landscape image, um, if you want to master you know, retouching the sky, um, replacing the sky, there's gonna be a lot of stuff we're gonna go into um, in the advanced retouching, uh, master retouching workshop um, that's coming up on April 9th. I highly recommend you guys uh, jump on that and click on the link that's in the chat because um, that, uh, that way it, um, you guys can save and get that $300 discount if you guys sign up today, because that is definitely a smart way to go. Okay, um, and, and you know what, and I have some great comments on here. Brittany Dickoff, you're absolutely right. Uh, you should be editing and or, you know, retouching from a raw file, absolutely, um, I mean, 100%. And if this was my file, I definitely would be starting from a raw, but since this is one of my photographer's files, they sent me hundreds and hundreds of JPEGs, we're starting from his, but you're absolutely right. Um, so, uh, 
Okay. Um, and uh, Keith was mentioning some comments about crow's feet. Um, and yeah, crow's feet um, that do extend from, um, uh, but you know what, Keith, crow's feet are both under the eyes and to the side of the eyes. I recommend this technique for both. Um, so, uh, um, okay, how do you keep track? Marvin asked, how do you keep track so that one face matches another image? Great, great question, Marvin. Um, I love to um, try to match an image that I already have retouched to make sure it's going to have the same look and feel. Um, so I have some of the re retouched images from the scene that I'll probably compare it to towards the end. And we can kind of compare and contrast um, and make sure that the fat face matches. But that's an absolutely really good point. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, but definitely, I want to have a cohesive look throughout this. And I'm still going through with a patch tool. But essentially, when I'm done, and say I'm completed with the patch tool. Now, I've, I probably spent a little bit more time on this. But let's go into kind of the next stage, because I want to make sure I can show you some stuff. Um, now, I, of course, I'm going to look at the skin next on other parts of her body. So her, her knee, I'm going to also get rid of little blemishes on her knee. Or um, we're going to look at different... Um, uh, you know, whether it's a blemish or whether it's a little mole, we're going to get rid of some of these things. All, still using the patch tool. Still using the patch tool. And um, now, of course, this is still, I, I'm actually, normally I would make another layer here. So I would uh, generally go to um, select these two layers together. And, um, and if I wanted to maintain that, I would essentially duplicate these and I would uh, essentially join them together. And we're going to do skin I'll call this one master skin retouch. And uh, but essentially what we're doing now is we're retouching um, basically all of the skin. So it includes the face, includes the, um, the legs. And I like to just keep track of that in my layers just so that I know. And if I need to come back and I can deselect layers and, and paint through areas. You know, here's some other areas of the skin. Um, we're going to also get rid of these, these moles here. And you know this model is pretty flawless. There's not too much we're gonna do here. Um, the hair can be a little wild, so we can fix that, but I kind of personally like it. Um, but uh, if we are gonna fix that, that would be something where I would use a clone stamp and, um, and then I would layer mask over um, the areas to bring it back the, um, around the shape of the hair. But I, I kind of like it the way it is because I don't want it to look too unnatural. Okay, the next thing is um, I'm going to then uh, work on the wings themselves. So in this case, like I don't want broken wings and we have a little bit of paint break here. So um, this can be a little tricky though, guys. So um, we're now going to go in and I'm going to attempt using the same methodology and we're going to create a, um, uh, we're going to select around it. Now I could go up or down, but the problem here is that um, we have another break in it right here. So, you know, ah, I don't know. That's a little bit funny. Maybe I'll fix this one first. And let's see if we can fix this area first and then move it. Um, that way uh, we have a little bit more to work with. The other option is if I select this area here, I can also I can move it over here and see if there's another section of the wing that I can match. Okay, so in this case, uh, I actually kind of like just sticking with this wing itself. Um, and we can do it piecemeal here a little bit. And then I'm using, of course, again, patch tool. And, um, but it's using, keeping a little bit of blemish here on um, basically creating some of that black. I wanna really be careful not to have that um, pollute it too much. So same kind of thing here. We're gonna um, move this around and um, now it's starting to look pretty natural and um, looking pretty smooth. Um, now, of course, and guys, just so you know, like I, I have learned not only from master retouchers and you know doing this my entire education, my entire career, but I've also um, learned from illustrators, professional illustrators. And in my experience, the best retouchers in the world are actually not photographers. They're generally illustrators. They're people that all day long, they work in Photoshop and Adobe Illustrator, and they're you know, managing things that are um, a lot more complex. And I sat with illustrators, and I was able to essentially master this, uh, master retouching by learning from illustrators, because I feel like illustrators are some of the great masters in um, Photoshop and any Adobe product, essentially. So um, that was just a suggestion. If you, if you do have access to any illustrator, if you ever know any illustrator, or those of you who ever are in like art school or photography school, team up with illustrators because they are 
amazing when it comes to Photoshop. Um, they can create just otherworldly scenarios and they can make sure your stuff looks natural and real. So I'm just kind of going through here. Of course, this is still like just the the um, the area of the wings themselves. They don't have to look perfect because it's not skin. You know, we can accept that there are some blemishes, but generally I want to make this as amazing as possible. Um, all right, and we're going to bring on a couple panelists today too, um, and uh, and I want to get you know some of their perspectives, um, maybe some of the challenges and questions that they have on retouching, as well as um, have them talk about their experiences because I'm going to bring on some photographers that actually were on set with me last week shooting with world class top models over the course of five days, um, and I know um, we've got uh, some photographers jumping on, and I'd love to introduce them to you. Um, as well. So, um, uh, so basically, as I go through this, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good overall. Most of this looks pretty clean. Um, there's not too many breaks in the um, in the gold. So um, I'm, I'm pretty feeling pretty confident, pretty happy about this. Um, when I want to now get into the next step, and that's going to be color. Now, before I get go from skin retouching and retouching of the um, of the wings and such, I'd love to get some uh, some questions about anything else in regard to this. Um, so uh, let's see, um, love to take some more questions from this. Um, and, uh, uh, and yes, and you know what guys, um, uh, George had, had mentioned that there's a making duplicates of background layers, totally old school. You're absolutely right. There's a million ways to do the same thing in Photoshop. There's probably 20 different methods uh, to do every single technique in Photoshop. Um, and you're right. I, I also love using adjustment layers um, on this and being able to, to basically adjust things everywhere underneath the adjustment layer. That's definitely another methodology. Um, and I love doing that. And we're going to get to that as well. Um, but this is a very simple and easy way for a lot of photographers to be able able to go through and create background layers and adjust, especially on the specific facial retouching um, to start with. Okay. Um, and, uh, oh, and then another question, uh, Karen was asking about the blemish on her lips. Okay. Let's look at the blemish on her lips. Um, not familiar with the blemish here. Everything looks pretty solid on the lips. Um, I would say maybe, maybe this tiny little one on the upper left, maybe, but they look pretty natural to me. So I'm pretty happy with the lips, um, but, uh, but thanks for at least pointing that out. Um, okay, uh, let's see. Okay, and Vicky, uh, you know, just so you know, um, that we're starting from scratch from an image, and this is my method to use um, a lot of these on a lot of different techniques. Um, but as far as skin retouching, this is where we're starting from. And if you want to get in a lot more major advanced stuff, um, as far as retouching, I highly recommend you take the advanced retouching workshop on April 9th, because we're going to go really, really in depth. So, um, okay, uh, let's see. Um, all right, now Vicky uh, Leonardo asks about the color correction demo, and that's something that is absolutely key and critical, um, because color correction is some of the things that most of you guys, um, I want to um, definitely help with. Uh, because color correction is absolutely key. All right, so if we go to um, the uh, color side, now immediately I'm looking at a couple of things. One is, um, oh, and I want to actually fix this, this aspect, this little thing in her wing too. Um, but one of the things I'm looking at when I'm looking at this uh, image is I want, I'm, I'm starting to look at the color and I'm starting to look at the brightness contrast. Now, overall brightness contrast is pretty solid, but I'm gonna now adjust a little bit of that. Now, before I get into color retouch or color adjustments, I wanna adjust the contrast um, and we could do it both ways, but I'm in this circumstance, I wanna start with curves layer and curves can be destructive. So I wanna be careful of this and you don't wanna use too many curves layers. So I'm gonna be basically on this, we're gonna be dra dragging from the bottom left this is essentially the black layer dra dragging to the right. And you can see what it's doing. And if we're adjusting here, you can see what it's doing, blowing things out. And um, But essentially, this is the histogram from darkness to brightness. And it goes, I believe, 0 to 255. Um, and um, right now, obviously, if, if everything's to the right, now we have everything's blown out. Everything's to the left. Everything's in shadow. So overall, this is a very solid histogram. And in this circumstance, I'm going to drag this a little bit to the right. And I'm going to make this a little bit more um, dramatic. Okay. Now I want to be a little careful because I don't want to blow out some of the stuff in her face. So I might have to paint through this curve layer and you know leave some of that stuff um, by painting through and making sure that the original layer 
is still there. So um, in this case, you know, I'm just doing this a tad bit um, and let's turn it off, turn it back on again. Okay, so you see just a, if I turn it on, it's just a little bit more contrasty. Um, I'm loving it, but the thing is, especially in the wings, but I'm not loving it on her face. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go, zoom into her face and we're gonna paint through the area on her face. And um, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna, um, I'm actually gonna switch this back to 100% opacity. I don't wanna paint through all of the area on their face to essentially make sure that it is not affecting, the curves layer is not affecting her face, right? Because I don't want more blown out areas because that's what it's essentially doing, okay, on her face. Um, and the same with her ear. Now, um, it, you know, so if I turn it off, turn it back on again, you see it's affecting everything else, but it's just not her face. Um, next thing, um, I, uh, if I want to um, adjust, say there's, there's a little bit of color issues here on her face too. I feel like this is a little bit orange on camera right. Um, and in uh, and, and a great, great comment to Monica Salina says, again, it all begins with a good makeup artist and hairstyles are absolutely right. Um, so super, super key to have great hair and makeup. And I only bring the top hair and makeup artists in the world on location with me. In this circumstance, though, I do feel like the makeup on this is just a little bit too orange on the side. So I'm going to fix that. We're going to create another adjustment layer. We're going to color balance and, um, and of course, now, if you guys ever remember from the dark room, I know I started off in the dark room um, using, you know, essentially it's, it, we're using color correction, cyan to red, magenta to green, yellow to blue. So to get rid of some of that orange tint here, we're going to want to essentially um, add a little bit of blue to get rid of some of the yellow. We want to add, let's see, play around here. Get, if, you, if you add a little bit of cyan to get rid of a little bit of the red. Um, and then let's see if any of that green is in there. It doesn't look like there's a whole lot of green. Um, looks like this is starting to recover it a little bit. I'm adding a little bit more cyan, adding a little bit more blue. And, um, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint bucket over it and um, essentially paint through the areas that are, um, that you know were kind of bothering me there. They were a little bit orangey, right? So now we're gonna paint through just a tad bit here and let's see if that changed it at all. It's kind of hard to see, and I don't know if you guys can see that at home, um, but it's just really, really light. It's really nuanced, very subtle. Um, and, um, and then another question, Phoenix asks, would you burn and dodge on her face? Yeah, in a sense, there's a bunch of different ways to burn and dodge. Um, in this case, I probably would burn. I mean, there, there is actually you know tools for that. I personally like using a little bit of painting through with adjustment layers. Um, and using that with brightness contrast. And um, so basically, you know, lowering the brightness um, by um, essentially, you know, using burning dodging um, as well as curves layer. So in this case though, it's very, very subtle uh, that we're adjusting some of that orange out of it and just the area. And if you want to see the area that I'm working on, it's this area right here. So I just put click backspace and that's what it's doing. Okay, so really interesting here. And, and guys, by the way, you know, many of you, um, you know, if you guys find this interesting or you want to focus on your photographic business and you want to take it to the next level um, and, you know, and whether you have questions um, on any aspect of photography, I highly recommend you set up a strategy session. Now, of course, the retouching is going to be um, explained during the retouching workshop in depth on April 9th. But if you want to have, if you have any questions about your photography, you want to really amp it up in 2022 and you want to shoot images like this, I highly recommend you also set up a one on one strategy session with one of our photographic consultants because we are offering this for free. It's a free strategy session with one of our expert photographic consultants. And, um, and it's a great opportunity to jump on and have some one-on-one -on -one Zoom time. You can go over your images with them. If you want a portfolio review, if you want to set up your uh, strategy session um, to, uh, you know, with for 2022, um, I highly recommend it. Um, I, we've got some incredible photographic consultants um, on our team that we can um, send your way. It's totally free. Go ahead and click on that. And, um, and it's just an awesome opportunity and you can have a great session with um, one of our amazing photographic consultants from whether it's Pris the great Priscilla Evans or Daniel Rothschild or um, Anne or Lisa 
um, or any of our new, new uh, team members, we've got some amazing people on our team that I strongly recommend um, you guys set up a consult with because it really does benefit you. And I've, I noticed that the photographers that are doing strategy sessions with our team end up making significantly more money. They create much better images. They start catapulting and achieving their goals much faster. And I see a lot more success um, from those photographers. So I strongly recommend that. Hit that in the chat make sure to click on that. It would be very, very worthwhile. So um, it's all in the chat, guys. Um, and uh, for those of you who are asking, so Phoenix and um, Fred, um, definitely, definitely click on that. Um, highly recommend. It's totally free. So, um, I, but it's just an awesome service that we do uh, because you know what? I've been doing this a long time in my career. I've been very successful with shooting celebrities. I've shot over 200 magazine editorials. I shoot $200,000 ad campaigns. I'm a television director, executive producer. And, but for me, I'm still authentically passionate about helping photographers achieve greatness and success. And that's why in 2021, this last year, we won 107 awards, 107 awards in the One Island Awards. We also won the top seven out of 10 uh, fashion photographers in the country, in America, the top seven out of 10 fashion photographers in the country were from the photography workshop series. I art directed all of these scenes with our photographers. Many of you are on this webinar right now that won. I'm super proud of you guys for achieving all this great greatness from John Wooten to Enoch to Jane to Nick Seth Smith um, to Mike Wyatt. I mean, you guys, to Joy Strauss, you guys crushed it this last year. We also won in the Color Awards. We won in the One, uh, One Island, Lurzer's Archive, um, uh, communication arts, and, um, and it's all a testament to the success of um, what we've been able to achieve at these epic workshops, these mind-blowing images. So if you guys are interested in that as well, let us know, and um, it'll give you the opportunity of a lifetime to shoot the greatest images you've ever shot in your life guaranteed, okay? So it is an experience that you will never forget, I promise you. Okay, so within this, if we're getting to the point of color correction, guys, um, I also, there, there's other things in here, not just the color on her face, um, but it also, I want maybe the gold to be a little bit more gold. And there's a couple of ways to do that. So one would be a color balance layer, adjustment layer, and I can add some color to this. So like say I'm adding yellow, maybe add a little bit of red. Okay. So it's making it a little bit more gold and red, maybe a little, even a little bit of magenta. Nah, mm, I'm gonna pull back on the magenta. So I'm really liking that. Okay. And I'm gonna essentially paint bracket over this and I'm gonna paint through the area that I want. And for you guys to see it, I'm gonna um, basically put on here the area in which I am painting. So you can get to see exactly the spots. Generally, I don't have that turned on when I'm retouching, but for you guys at home to see this, um, this gives you that idea. Okay, so, um, and then I turn it off so I can do some more nu nuanced stuff. Um, but this way I can see where all that color is happening. And this is what I'm talking about, where it's color correction, where I'm color correcting every specific image, or I'm sorry, every specific color within the image, not just the overall image, okay? That's really, really important. And I want you guys to take that, take note of that. I'm doing this to very, very specifically. You can see the areas in which I have made more, more gold, okay? Um, also, um, I'm, okay, so in addition to this, I could also do photo filter. So I'm going to do photo filter. And um, within photo, photo filter, um, generally I like the 85. And uh, we're going to create the density. You could even add a little bit of the density. And, um, and then again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to paint over this. And I'm going to paint through just the area of the golden wings. And I'm, again, I'm at 100%. And for you guys to see it, I'm just going to paint through this. And it's adding that nice, beautiful warming filter. And I love this. I think this is a nice technique to use to make it a little bit warmer. I, I use photo filter quite a bit, um, also on the faces to kind of warm up the faces a little bit. Um, but I love doing this. Okay. Um, and then, uh, and you know what? It's still not as bright of a gold as I want. So I'm not quite there yet. So let's, you know what? I'm actually going to increase the yellow and red on this layer just a little bit more. And, and, and you know what, I, I, think, I, I think it's going to need another adjustment layer. And I'm looking at more in this central area that needs a little bit more uh, of that. So in there, I'm going to create another layer with yellow and red. And I'm going to paint, paint over it. 
and then we're going to paint through just this area to bring it through. Okay, so now it's starting to pop just a tad bit more, but I'm still maintaining great skin tone. Um, you know, overall, might be able to adjust the skin tone a tad. Um, this would be an opportunity also um, if I want to tone down the skin, which, by the way, you guys had commented earlier, might be a little bit bright in the skin. I actually think the skin is pretty solid only because the eye always goes to the brightest part of the image. So if you notice, there's also some brighter areas like here on, um, on our collar. I want to make sure that eye is going, like the viewer is looking at her face because that's the most important part. That the eye always goes to the brightest part and the sharpest part. So if we can do that, I think that's really, really important. So in this case, um, I'm, if I do want to tone it down, I might go brightness contrast. And I'm looking at her face right now, toning down just a tad. And, uh, and then I'm going to, of course, paint over this and paint through just the area of her face. And, and by the way, you know, once again, guys, I, there's a million um, different ways of um, uh, sidestepping this. There's, there's literally 20 different ways to do everything in Photoshop. There's also all kinds of keystrokes and stuff that I could be doing. Um, but just to slow it down for everybody that can see this, I'm, I'm being very careful with that. Um, also, that I feel like the ear is a little bit bright. So I'm gonna, br I'm gonna also darken the ear. I'm gonna create another brightness contrast layer. I'm going to darken this down, it's starting to get a little weird with color. So I'm not going to go too crazy on that, um, but this is going to be the for the ear. And just so I can differentiate, I might name this ear over here. And, um, and then I'm going to zoom in to just the ear. And uh, let's see if this, um, if, if this is going to look OK. And we're going to paint through just the area um, of the ear. Yeah, and that, that brings it down just a tad. Um, I might even now this is something that I normally would do before we get into all this retouching and stuff like that. But another thing you can do, of course, is also manipulate it by warping it. And um, and, and if we're going to do that, um, I would basically take my background layer and um, I would um, you know be be essentially adjusting things. Now, of course, there's rendering and um, you know we can we can add some great things like lens flare. We can do sharpening. Um, you know, we can distort. And, um, you know, we can do a lot of different things, um, but oftentimes, like if I'm going to, um, you know, do some stuff, I like to use liquify to, um, you know, and you can see like liquify here. Uh, but, I, but in this case, I don't, I feel like she's so strong. We don't really have to liquify. Um, it's actually looking pretty solid right as it is. Okay. So, um, so in this case, I, I, I don't want to do the liquefying right now. Um, but you know, right now I think that, you know, you, in, if you wanted to, if you want to make the model thinner or you wanted to elongate or whatever, you could do that. Valena is such a great model. She's perfect right out of camera. There's really not much I would do here on the liquefy set. Okay. So, um, Okay. Um, oh, um, and you know what? Uh, those of you guys that you made a comment um, to uh, move my face, hopefully that helped. Um, that you guys could uh, ask if um, I would move the um, the window of me. I don't know if that's something um, uh, in that comment, guys. Um, uh, Kate, Keith, if that was something on my end or if something you might be able to move, but um, I just moved it. So hopefully that helps you. Let me know, Keith. Okay, and uh, Vita, um, uh, yes, this recording will be um, available later, um, and uh, you can watch this in rebroadcast. Strongly recommend that, um, and also make sure, guys, to set up your one-on-one uh, -on -one strategy session so you can jump on Zoom live with one of our professional photographic consultants, and they can go over some um, concepts. Now, not retouching; they're not going to go over; they're not going to be going over retouching with you, but more so your photographic journey, your photographic business, your goals, identity, what you want to create in your photography. That's what they're here for. Okay, and I strongly recommend you guys set those up because it's absolutely vital. Okay, back to the retouching. Before we get into some of the questions and bring on my amazing panelists, um, I really love to. Um, and, and thank you, um, Siva Kumar. I, I appreciate that. Thanks for the, <laughs> the kind words and the great session. Um, and, uh, and if you guys love this, of course, there's also our amazing, um, uh, I, I strongly recommend you also join and watch our YouTube channel. Um, we have a lot of um, incredible stuff on there as well. We have over 40 uh, free uh, photographic webinars. Um, on all different aspects of um, photography that are fantastic. Um, so um, I uh, on this, if I am feeling really good about this, I'm liking the face, 
Um, I feel like maybe the eyes can be a little brighter. And, uh, you know, I, earlier I, I kind of darkened the face here, right? Well, I also, um, I, I didn't take into account that I'm also darkening the eyes. So, um, all right, now I'm going to go in. I want to make sure that I paint through um, and actually bring out the eyes because the eyes, obviously, I don't want darkened. You know, I'm okay with the face uh, being darkened, but I don't want the eyes darkened. So right now I'm going back in. And this is the great thing about adjustment layers is I can go back and change that. So now I'm going to make that a bit brighter. And um, and I think I'm going to enhance them even more. So, um, oh, whoops, I didn't want to make a group. Um, and uh, so in the here, I'm going to also, let's brighten the eyes just a tad bit more. And um, I'm going to just brighten this up a little bit. If I'm looking at the eyes, I'm going to be zooming in pretty close. And, uh, and I'm looking at, yeah, I want just a little bit of oomph here, okay? So, um, and again, I'm going to be paint bucking over, you know, put a paint bucket over that. And I'm going to paint through just the area that are the eyes here. And I'm making that a little bit brighter, spilling over just a little bit into the whites, not too much. And I'm uh, making it just a little bit brighter, okay? All right. So now, you know, these are all nuanced, but all these little things, they add up all of the little the little bits that we're doing add up and you know and if i wanted to get rid of the hair what i would do is use a clone stamp and i would um i would clone stamp over all of this and i would paint it through but i actually really like the hair i just think it's stylized really nice i'm going to keep that um one other thing that i might change would be this like this harsh line right here uh, over the side of her um face so if i go back to that I, it becomes a little bit more um visible with that um that that intense um uh area of, um, I'm going to actually put this um, uh, wrinkle and let's specifically work on this wrinkle. And in, in those of you guys, if you don't want to work in a bunch of background layers, of course, you can always do things like um, take all of these layers and just command E and basically join them all together. Uh, but uh, but in this case, um, I'm, I'm starting, I want to be able to go back and forth. Okay. So in this case, I'm going to also, um, all right. So if I want to adjust this, we're going to then go back and I'm going to have a 30% um, opacity and I'm basically sampling areas and bringing them through and making it as clean as possible um, and kind of slightly getting rid of that little wrinkle. Okay. Um, and I don't want it too intense, you know, but having it just a little bit more clean. Um, and I feel like if that, you know, let's, let's look at, okay, actually it does look nicer. I'm happy with that. And if I want to bring back, I think I covered up a little bit of her nostril. So if that's the case, I'm going to do another adjustment, um, another layer mask, and I'm going to paint through just the area of her nostril so that that's not an issue. Okay. Excellent. Um, all right. So um, let's see guys. And uh, great. Um, and great questions here, by the way. I really appreciate that. Um, all right. Great questions. Love all of the comments. This is fantastic. Um, and I think that uh, I really appreciate everybody jumping in on that. Um, all right. And, uh, and yeah, and, and I know a lot of you photographers, you know, you guys, you know, you all retouch on your own and that's fantastic. Um, but, uh, but I think that, um, uh, it's really important to um, to use new strategies and to learn other techniques. If you do think you're a master retoucher, that's great. Um, but let me ask you this: you know, are you landing uh, hundred thousand dollar, two hundred thousand dollar ad campaigns, and are you doing the retouching for those jobs? You know, are you you know doing stuff at the highest level and getting published in major magazines? Um, you know, and doing all the retouching on that. And if not, then maybe let's let's use some some of these techniques to 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 raise it up a notch. And honestly, guys, even if we are uh, master retouchers and we are creating unbelievable content um, and retouching it, and ha or having, um, we still need to make sure that the retouching has to be the highest level possible. And also, if you hire retouchers, make sure you still know how to do retouching at the highest level. Because if you even hire retouchers, I want to make sure that your um, the people that you hire, honestly, you're lucky if they get 80% there. Okay, so I usually have to finish the job even if I hired those retouchers. All right, guys. So um, in this case, I'm feeling really good about this. 
Um, I, I'm, I'm liking what I'm seeing here is she's looking a lot more clean. I'm still maintaining a little bit of that nice um, kind of shine. Um, I'm also really liking the um, uh, kind of the glimmer. Um, I really, really think this looks is starting to look nice and clean. It's also looking a lot more gold. Um, and, uh, and if I want to make her pop a little bit more too, sometimes I might even darken the background a little bit. So um, if I do another brightness contrast layer here at the top, um, and I'm going to bring this down. Um, I might bring, darken down the background just a tad. And, uh, and then again, I, I'm going to be painting through the area that I don't want dark, so such as the model herself. So I'm going to bring painting through this area. And if you want to see what I'm doing here, um, we can, let's see. All right. We, uh, so I'm going to be painting through just this area, and I want to be able to see um, I want the background to be darker, but I want her to be slightly brighter because I want her to pop even more from the background, like just like she is. Okay, so we're noticing all the little details and nuances um, and making it pop just a tad bit more. Now, uh, one of the things now, th there's also a lot of um, different perspectives on, um, you know, on, on different ways of retouching. And I, I welcome you guys to all use your own strategies. Um, you know, on retouching, because I, I think that it's really important for you guys to master your technique. But I would recommend incorporating the strategy and technique because it really does. Um, it is a strong technique. It's something where when I get booked on major campaigns, um, I am using, they are hiring me not just for my photography, but also for my retouching techniques, because I have a certain look and feel that they're going for that's very natural, very clean. And I want to make sure that the look, feel and style of your work is the same. It's very, very important. I want to make sure that it looks as perfect as possible uh, without being um, over the top, without being, um, you know, uh, over retouched. And that's that's kind of a nuanced thing to say, and it's hard to even identify what that is. But just remember, um, if uh, if it feels like it's a little bit overdone, it probably is. Right. And I recommend even showing it to some other people and getting their perspectives, um, because oftentimes it's, it's hard for us to kind of look outside of ourselves. And oftentimes I even go back and I might re retouch something uh, just because I want to make sure it, you know, I still have um, the, the kind of feel that I originally wanted um, that might not be there. You know, I might might have overdone it. And I'm very, very careful with that. Now, in the advanced retouching method um, uh, workshop, we're going to go way more in depth, way more advanced. We're also going to bring on uh, two world class professional retouchers, where that's all they do. They're going to showcase their techniques. We're also um, going to showcase some sharpen only edges strategy, which is one of my absolute favorite things. Um, it's something that um, I strongly recommend, and it's something that I use um, it, you know, intensely on all my images, and it makes everything pop. Um, we're going to go in depth about that. Uh, during that workshop. It's going to be amazing. Um, and how to retouch images at the highest level, not just these fashion images, but also images that are um, uh, landscape photography, you know, images that are um, portrait photography, images that are wedding photography, how to get images to look a certain way if we are, you know, if we do something other than just um, you know, uh, fashion, because obviously, uh, many of you guys do all kinds of photography. So I want to, you know, showcase this because we're going to be definitely talking about all different types of photography and each different type of photography has a different retouching method. Right. So, um, and, you know, and I'll, and I'll give you a few more examples of some of the things that I absolutely love as far as, um, some of my favorite, um, you know, uh, I would say styles of retouching. Like for instance, these are some of the images um, that we had uh, retouch, especially on the top images. Um, I really love that. Um, I don't know how it's rendering on the screen here, um, but creating something really clean, really, um, you know, but still has that very New York fashion look. Really, really important to kind of maintain a look, feel, and style that's totally over the top. Um, another one is um, this image right here that I'm about to pull up. A shot at our elite masterclass and very challenging to do, but we made this image just completely pop. And especially with a sharp and only edges um, tactic. And, um, and we, you know, incorporated a lot of awesome retouching techniques on this to make it look absolutely amazing. This is from one of our photographers, Nick Seth Smith. He might even be on this webinar right now. Um, and, uh, and then also something like if we're doing black and white photography, something like this, right? Very nuanced, 
um, but creating every different area of the shadows to totally pop and making sure that it looks very dramatic because the way it was photographed, it was stunning, but in post-production, we made this look a lot more dramatic with the way we retouched the image to make it totally, totally pop and just completely jump off the page. Because that's what we're looking for. We're looking for content to completely jump off the page. If we're doing lifestyle photography, which we're going to get in depth with at the, um, the April 9th workshop as well, uh, we're going to talk about um, you know the um, images and how we can create that innate color and contrast so it just jumps off the page, gets you excited, and content just like this um, that we did from, this was actually from one of our lifestyle workshops um, in Chicago, totally jumps off the page. And it makes everything completely pop. Um, another series of examples, uh, images that just pop off the page. These are also from our Chicago workshop as well. Um, this is on the fashion section. But making it pop, making it jump off the page. Um, now, uh, all these are really important to master, whether you're mastering fashion, whether you're mastering lifestyle, portraiture, wedding, celebrity, all of that. Um, but I want you guys to be able to become true artists, you know, whether it's something like this, where it's a dramatic black and white sequence of top images. These were shot at our masterclass, um, you know, creating mind blowing content and then making the retouching absolutely spectacular. Or, you know, on the, uh, um, on the workshop on April 9th, we're also going to go in depth about how to retouch landscape photography and stuff like this to make images like this pop. This is shot by me in um, Bora Bora. Um, or an image like this one that uh, was shot in um, Kauai. And to make that completely pop. Um, so showcasing all these different techniques and using the different strategies for the different types of photography, absolutely key and critical. So guys, um, I know this was, uh, you know, we're just um, getting uh, into some of this amazing retouching stuff. I want to take some more questions. I also want to bring some amazing panelists on. Um, and, uh, and I look forward to um, working with you guys, uh, not only um, in the experience in, um, uh, on April 9th, but also I'd love for you to come and experience some of our in-person workshops that are absolutely to die for, to create this mind-blowing content that is so over the top, so epic, um, just like you saw um, you know, with all of our photographers winning uh, in the One Island Awards, for instance, the top, you know, 10 photographers, seven out of 10 of them were from the, the uh, photography workshop series. And, uh, you know, and I think two of these, three of these were actually shot at a Las Vegas workshop, which is happening in a week and a half, two weeks. Um, it's coming up. And um, I strongly recommend you guys get involved in one of these experiences because having amazing retouching, of course, it starts all with a great image. Starts with the world-class top supermodels that have been in Vogue and Vanity Fair and Harper's Bazaar. It starts with the world-class top styling, the hair, the makeup, the wardrobe. And once you have all of that, you can take it to the next level and create mind-blowing content. Um, but it definitely starts with the production. That is absolutely um, key and critical. Okay, so guys, um, I, uh, I'd love to take more of your questions. Please ask them in the Q&A and I'd love to um, answer them. Um, and uh, and uh, Josie, I will send you the uh, YouTube channel. Absolutely, it's for Photography Workshop Series. Um, and, um, and also Josie, you asked, do I retouch all my work? Um, I do retouch the, a lot of the stuff that you guys do see, I do retouch because I essentially am um, taking the best of the best of the best of the best. Um, and retouching that stuff for major publications and, um, and everything. But um, if I have a big project and I need additional retouchers, I hire retouchers and I have uh, three different retouchers I work with. Um, and then they, they basically go about 80% and then I, um, or they get as much done as they can and then I finalize it and I finish it um, for my specific look. And, um, and that way I know that the clients are getting what they're paying for, you know, that, that high-end final content. And by the way, the images I'm showing you here are images that we produced and directed with our students, our attendees. These are all shot by our attendees at the workshops in person. And I'm just showcasing you my retaining techniques of their images, of these attendees' images. Um, and, uh, you know, and if you want to see um, some of the content that, um, you know, comes out of it, that's why I want to show you guys this, because it is you know, absolutely world-class. It's amazing production level. And, um, and I'm really proud of all the success that our photographers have had this year because to win that many awards is absolutely outstanding. Um, and, uh, you know, to showcase you some of, uh, of my work as far as stuff that I photographed and retouched from start to finish would be something like this. And this was also shot on location at our Elite Masterclass in Los Angeles as well. 
and we're going to be doing something like similar to this out in Las Vegas, doing massive scale production in two weeks. Um, I think there is a spot open. So if you guys do want to join, jump in, have the experience. It's a five day massive scale production with supermodels. We're flying in from LA and New York, and we're creating the greatest content you've ever shot in your lifetime. So it's pretty insane. All right. Um, I'd also bring love to bring on uh, one of uh, a couple panelists. Um, the the uh, I would love Tara to jump on. Um, Tara, um, I'd love for you to jump on and, and tell us about. First of all, you just experienced like um, you're with me all of last week shooting um, for the photography workshop series. You're with me under this massive scale production. We shot at twelve million dollar mansions. We shot with top world class models. We shot with a fashion stylists that I brought in that have styled in Milan. Um, I've got, um, you know, the best of the best production. We shot with scenes with baby goats. We shot scenes with Highland cows. We shot scenes with all these unbelievable models. Um, first of all, why don't you tell me about the experience? And then after that, I'd love to uh, you to tell us about maybe any questions or challenges you ever had with retouching. And I can help you with that. So Tara, oh, why don't you tell me, first of all, about the experience that you had last week in Newport Beach? Um, the experience was incredible. Uh, I had never worked in that environment before where there's models and mansions and multiple sets going on. And I found that just to be so invigorating and such a different style of photography than I'm used to, that I was really drawn into um, the entire experience. And what type of photography are you normally used to? Um, I have made my way from landscapes to portraits and I currently specialize in studio headshots. So being outside on location, dealing with natural light and the bounces is exactly 180 from what I'm used to doing day in in my studio. Excellent. And how do you think it's changed how you see photography and how what you're going to incorporate going forward? Oh, <laughs> it's given me a, an avenue to my dreams. I think I, I have this vision of where I want my life to go. And I've been trying to reconcile it with how my photography, photography path has been going up to this point. And I, I couldn't really see how I wanted to explore my photography and pursue it and make it profitable yet still from a personal side, be able to explore things that interest me. And I think this, um, the, the lifestyle type of shoots can give me both and bring them together and not throw away the skills I've learned over the years, but just add them to my toolbox and be a better photographer all the way around. Got it. Got it. Okay. Okay. And was there a certain experience, like a certain moment or a certain scene that just rocked your world more than anything else? you know, the baby goats baby <laughs> you <bought> the... <laughs> when I walked because we had been shooting back by the pool and the next set was out front and I walked out front to, to get ready and see how you were setting it up. And when I saw <laughs> five three day old baby goats, I just could not believe it. And it was just so fun because the set warmed up and the models, just the, the energy that came from them when they inter were interacting with those goats was so fun to capture. My imagination just went crazy with all of the advertising type of um, applications that images for that could go for. Absolutely. Here's just a few clips straight out of camera, not even edited, just a few clips straight raw from the camera. Hey, there's a baby goat right there. Um, <laughs> all these amazing models, incredible production. Yeah, excellent. Cool. Cool, Tara. Um, so shooting with baby goats and creating the scene that you probably didn't even access to, 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 you know, you probably have a hard time to produce a shoot like that on your own with, you know, on our last day we shot, you know, with, we actually shot with nine models on the last day, which I've never experienced that ever, ever before, but anywhere from three to nine top models from the top modeling agencies. Um, so why don't you tell me a little bit about then what you're going to go do going forward with your photography now that you experienced that? Okay. Um, I think my vision is to continue. I want to keep doing my headshots, uh, still do portraits, but pursue some of the techniques that I learned at the workshop to apply it for consumer photography. And then with the big goal in mind, going into commercial photography and ad campaigns and working in different industries that interest me to, um, you know, that allow me to travel and share my interests and really get into those environments that I think I could really serve. Excellent. So, well, I love the sound kind of, of that. That's like a awesome. tripod business with uh, three different legs coming out of it. 
Sweet, sweet. Well, mm -hmm. I'm excited for you and I can't wait to work with you on the next one. So it's going to be amazing. Yes. So Tara, um, tell me about um, retouching. So that okay. the topic of today is retouching. And I know you okay. shot all these amazing images. You have thousands of images you just shot. Um, <laughs> do you have any questions on retouching or things that, or maybe even comments of things that you just learned during this webinar? Um, or, you know, can, can you tell me about, a little bit about that? Yeah. So the top things that come to mind. So I, I'm, I'm maybe a quarter of the way into my... Uh, 10,000 images that I shot during the workshop <laughs> and I'm wow, doing 10,000 images. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Oh it's my a goodness. Lot. <laughs> so much goodness. <laughs> um, so the things that are, I'm coming to mind as I'm selecting the top ones from each day is because I am coming from the world of different lenses and still, still subjects, um, sharpening, you know, what it obviously when I shoot a headshot, I want it laser, laser focus sharp. These images that I've created, some of my favorites where they're expressing the energy are not as crystal clear sharp as I want them to be. So the, the criteria for sharpness, and I know you said that the April 9th workshop would go into sharpening. And, hugely, um, hugely, yeah. And the crop, like desirable crop, because I have all these images and I'm, the format which I took the photos may not be, the best application for a, a final image. So what what crop do you recommend? And there was one other thing, but I forgot. Well, that's a good one. question. I'm glad you brought up cropping. Um, a lot of photographers um, kind of shoot with the intention of cropping. I personally like to shoot everything where my shot is basically going to be the final image you publish. So I want you to do think about that. Every, going forward, every scene you shoot, I want you to get it all in camera so you don't have to crop. And the reason being, Tara, is because mm -hmm. when I um, when I shoot a scene and I go in and I crop a section of it, there's something about it visually, and I can't explain it, but it's something about it visually. It never looks perfect the way mm -hmm. it would have looked if it was shot in camera. Okay. And in all the years I've been doing this, I, I don't. I've never experienced it where it looked just as good with a crop mm -hmm. as it did. And I'm talking about like a major crop. I mean, obviously, if you're cropping just like a tiny you know, half inch off a side or something that's different, but any major crop, I want you to shoot it as full frame as possible if you can. Okay. And, um, and generally shoot with a double page spread if you can, if it's a horizontal, um, so you can publish it and one side, there's a bleed mm -hmm. line down the middle and um, one side will be um, imagery and the other side might be the topography kind of thing. So okay. start thinking about that because okay. I know it's different than a portrait photographer. So, okay, okay. so uh, any other comments that you noticed uh, or do you have any on what we just went over? Um, I, I underscore what you said that there's a million ways to do things in Photoshop and I think everybody gets proficient in using the certain techniques that they like to use and it's also good to add different things like I don't normally go in with the color channels, the color mixer, and the color balance and do that so I'm looking forward to going in and working with that a little bit. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. And are you using each, are you adjusting every single color within the image? Um, for, I'm not currently doing that. No. Okay. So that's so, going to be their next step. Okay. And that's I will do that when I 98% yeah. of photographers don't do that. Okay. So like yeah. making sure that every single facet of that image is um, mm -hmm. the color is adjusted. Absolutely right. key and critical. Um, so just think about that and, um, and using color adjustment layers. Okay, really, I guess really that brings good. on one more quick question then. What about like saturation of colors? Do you normally do any adjusting that way? Absolutely. So um, I generally don't increase saturation. However, I use desaturation all the time. Okay. Huh. And so for instance, when we're photographing something and the images we just went over was a, um, uh, a very monochromatic kind of gold kind of color kind of image, right? But an mm -hmm. image that is shot um, in a different way, uh, for instance, that does have white, which I love using white, something like this, mm -hmm. this was heavily desaturated. So for instance, the original image here, we have all kinds of uh, color contamination on the right side of her dress, but I removed it by desaturating the dress. And I desaturate mm -hmm. by like 60 points and then paint through. So it's just the area of her dress, right? Same thing with the hot air balloon, or I'm sorry, of the, um, the parachute, the areas of white, I desaturated. The areas of red, I added red. I mm -hmm. added a little bit of red, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of magenta, and I made it more pure and red. The sky, I made it just slightly more blue. 
But you see all these little things, they add up to a perfect image. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. And so you did that through the color balance. Yeah. So color adjustment layers and then mm -hmm. adjusting every single section of the color in the image. And, right. and overall, this image doesn't have that many colors in it. It's just basically mm -hmm. white, blue, and red, and, and a little bit of black. But, um, but if you have a lot of colors in an image, if it's very busy, a lot going on, it's even more important to make it pop, right? To make it totally pop out of camera. The more you do that, and the more you specifically adjust every color in the image, the better it's going to be, and the more it's going to pop, and the more it's going to stand out, and you're going to be wowed and dazzled by the final image. So really important to do that. And I want you to um, think about that and use it going forward in all your pictures because it will um, create what we call innate contrast. Okay, great. Well, thanks for the techniques I learned today. I appreciate it. 100%, 100%. Yeah, um, I'll even show you an example of um, an image. It's a little bit more complex um, of uh, color, but um, it's something like this. This was done at our elite masterclass on circus fashion. And we actually shot it at LA Circus, which is the premier circus location in all of the world for um, circus production. We actually built a set and shot this, um, literally like created this and shot it and it was unbelievable. Um, but, uh, but all the colors in this, it's very, very colorful. So we had to adjust all the colors to be, and, and I didn't want to pop too much because I wanted a little muted because I, I wanted a little bit of that kind of, you know, old look to it. Um, but I did go in there and adjust different colors, as you can see, actually, in the um, uh, the layers on the side. Got it. Cool. Very cool. Well, thank you, Tara. And I cannot wait to see you at the next workshop. Um, those of you guys who have not um, uh, answer the poll, I would request that you guys go ahead and answer the poll that we just put up the survey asking how likely would you guys be to enroll in one of our elite photographic workshops. Um, you know, you guys just saw Tara who just attended it last week with us had an epic experience. And um, I you guys are obviously this entire time for the last hour and a half you've been watching our images are amazing mind blowing content all shot at the workshops, including the video. And Tara got to film with um, a high-end 8K camera, filming all kinds of incredible content, 120 frames of 4K. Uh, and she'll have this amazing video reel for her too. So in addition to the photography, Tara was able to master video too, which is fantastic. So thank you so much, Tara. Cannot wait to see you at the next one. I'm really excited. And um, it's gonna be a whole new chapter in your life photographically. Yes, I'm thank so you. And thank you for introducing, introducing me to that next new chapter. I appreciate it. <laughs> Absolutely. We're here for you, Tara. And we're here for you like we, we before the workshop, during the workshop, and even after the workshop. And going forward, now Tara is setting up a one-on-one -on -one session with Daniel Rothschild to go over her images and select the best of the best of the best for her then to then select the ones for retouching. So she's kind of in that process right now. So she called down from 10,000 images, which is insane, to <laughs> what, her top 40 from each day that then she's going to then select the best of the best, the top five from that um, from each day and then retouch those. So excellent, and Tara. And please incorporate everything you learned today in that and watch this and rebroadcast. Great. I will. Thank you, Karen. Right. Thanks, Tara. Bye. All right, guys. So um, you guys heard that from Tara. Love for you guys to um, please answer in the in the um, polls and the in the uh, survey if you haven't already. Um, and uh, and I'd love to take any more questions. Um, all right. Excellent, guys. Um, all right. So, uh, Chosy Duarte. Um, yeah, I look forward to seeing you at a workshop as well. Excited to have you. Um, and uh, also we have another Richard Freeman ask in adjusting your whites. Is your high key lighting two stops over exactly? Good question. Good question, Richard. Um, I'm actually very careful with my high key lighting not to overdo it. I'm really careful because I really don't want any blown out areas. I really like, especially if I'm shooting fashion. If I'm shooting lifestyle, it's a little bit more latitude because I like the bright, fresh, blown out kind of look for some of it. But for fashion, I'm very cautious with that. Um, and I don't want it blown out just like here. Like, you know, there are some great highlights here, but this image isn't, isn't blown out. Um, so, and, and you can see it in the histogram here, right? This histogram on the bottom right, you can see the, um, how this image, everything kind of falls within that range. Most of it's uh, between 20 and about 245 or so, the majority of that. Um, so it doesn't necessarily have to be two stops, but I definitely am going to pump it up, especially in post the face to make them a little bit brighter and make them pop just a little bit more if we can. 
And by the way, guys, this is one of the most watched webinars we've done in probably a year. Um, I'm really excited about all the attendees that have been on this. This has been absolutely fantastic. Um, and I also um, love all the questions and comments. Um, and those of you, even if you guys, you know, <laughs> write positive or negative, I don't care. I still love to hear them. I really appreciate it. And I love for you guys to jump in. It's fantastic. I do these for you. And I want to make sure that you guys um, get as much out of this as possible. I'm here to give. I'm here to give, give, and give. And that's why, you know, I'm, I've had a very fortunate career um, as a successful photographer. Um, I, you know, put on, I do these massive scale productions. I do these massive scale productions. And I'm also here to create, you know, amazing experiences, both photographically in person and in, and on um, Zoom, um, just like these, um, uh, the photographic workshop on April 9th on retouching. Um, but I'm here for you guys. That's literally my goal is to make photographers around the world. That I want to get them to their highest level of potential. And, you know, I'm, I'm a busy guy. I'm traveling all over. I'm filming two TV shows. I've got, I'm shooting, you know, massive sale commercial productions. I've got, I own a 49 room castle in France that we actually also hold a workshop at um, in, um, uh, in, in the summers. We have um, massive scale production and a lot of stuff going on. But still, for me, the most important thing is to help photographers achieve greatness. And that's why I have devoted my life to guiding photographers, mentoring photographers, and helping catapult literally thousands and tens of thousands of photographers at, to the highest level of their potential, because it's really, really important to me, photographers and people in, in video production. All right. Um, I'd love um, uh, Dan uh, Rothschild to jump on as well. Um, I'd love to hear just his perspective on the workshop experience. And Dan, um, I, uh, I know you had an experience to join us um, this uh, this last week. It was wonderful. It was in Newport Beach. And um, and also, I know you have a lot of photographers that do image reviews with you. You have a lot of photographers, Dan, that um, that maybe struggle with retouching. You have a lot of photographers where they're developing and printing portfolios. What I want to know from you, Dan, because you're a professional photographic consultant, what are some of the things that you see in photographers where they could improve in the most in their retouching? Because you're looking at their pictures all day. What do you see could really improve their retouching? And what do you think that could really help them going forward? Are there certain aspects of it? Absolutely, Kevin. And thanks for having me on. And um, howdy, everybody. Uh, so, you know, retouching, you're the expert in it. What I see is that photographers can take a great picture, but then they have to prepare it. And you bring this up so well in, in your in the workshop you'll be doing, you're going to go over this incredibly, is that they have to prepare it for the specific medium that they're going to be uh, using and presenting. Uh, like, for instance, if they're going to be putting it in a magazine, it's a whole different style of retouching versus if they're going to be promoting themselves and presenting their photos uh, to you know, commercial for like ad campaigns to companies. So they, they photographers to jump to the next level and make really good money, um, like you do ad campaigns from 100 to 100 to 200,000 per ad campaign. Um, to be able to get to that level or even uh, you know, smaller than that, but still fantastic, like anywhere between twenty to $50,000 ad campaigns, you have to have the photos retouched correctly for that genre. So that, that's really important. And I see that many times uh, photographers will retouch their photos uh, for, uh, with, you know, for a magazine, but use the style that would be better off utilized to be presenting to say a company and all. And is that uh, kind of what you're looking for or? Thanks, Dan. Well, mm -hmm. I, I feel like, um, you know, you get this opportunity to be on the front lines of photographers. Could you tell us a little bit about what the benefit would be to set up a one-on-one -on -one strategy session with a professional photographic consultant? Because I know, you know, you get to run a lot of these and you're on the front lines because you know you work with photographers, coaching them to the highest level. Can you tell me a bit about what the, the benefit for a photographer is to do a one-on-one -on -one strategy session with a professional photographic consultant? Oh, totally. You're, you're, you're singing my music. It, it, here's, here's the, my motivation uh, enormously every day is I wanna help 
photographers go to that next level. And gosh, I'm sure whoever is on the webinar, many, many photographers know what I'm talking about, meaning for you know, you're, you're grinding, you're working hard, you're trying to, you know, but you just, you stick in that same uh, level of pay, um, quantity of clients, type of clients. And so to have, a, if you do a strategy session, say, you know, with myself or Priscilla or uh, Lisa or Anne or any of us, what we can do is guide you on the simple uh, techniques and process of how to brand yourself and be able to present yourself to companies so you get hired to do you know, photo shoots, uh, whether they're ad campaigns or others, um, and make much more money because you're already spending the time, you already have the passion, you love photography, uh, and so you might as well, what I call work smarter um, instead of harder. And so to do a session, I, I work with uh, photographers every day. And my motto is I'll help you as much as you'll let me. Because, you know, however far you want to go and how, you know, whatever you want to accomplish, it, I, I say this all the time, it isn't rocket science. It's just knowing what to do and the steps to follow. So, uh, the uh, advantage is that you're going to uh, learn and know and answer your own questions because everyone, everyone's, you always are you know, sitting back for how many years going, gosh, I want to get there. I don't know how. How do I do it? What do I do? And so you get the answer of how do you do it and what do you do uh, and then can do it. Uh, it takes, you have to apply it and it takes consistency of applying it and all that. but you're already spending all the time and working hard, so you might as well get the benefit. So Kevin, to answer your question, uh, you're gonna be able to advance your uh, photographic uh, work and uh, business um, enormously. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Dan. I really appreciate it. Yeah. And I appreciate everything you do uh, for our amazing photographers and you help them achieve their dreams. So, um, and, and I learned about uh, retouching today, uh, some more things, so it's, it was great. Thanks for sharing. Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, I, uh, I I wanted to make sure in the chat, you guys did see that. Um, I think uh, before I was sharing it with the panelists and for some reason it didn't go to all of the um, uh, all of the audience there, but um, make sure to set up a one-on-one -on -one strategy session. Um, if you guys are interested in um, working with one of our professional photographic consultants. Um, and also um, if you guys are interested in, um, you know, jumping on and enrolling in one of these amazing um, the April 9th workshop, um, click on that uh, link in the chat um, because that will be a uh, very intensive and incredible experience. Um, and, and because you attended this webinar, um, we're offering a $300 discount off of it. So instead of it being $12.95, it's $9.95. Um, it'll be a five hour intensive. It'll be with a series of other professional world-class retouchers that all they do is retouch all day, as well as myself. And um, we're going to be going in depth about retouching landscape photography, fashion photography, portrait photography, wedding photography, beauty photography, all of it. And we're going to be creating a, an amazing experience to retouch all these different types of facets and the attendees, such as yourselves, um, we can retouch uh, select images from attendees that are joining, which is really spectacular. So if you guys haven't uh, clicked that already, make sure to set up a one-on-one -on -one strategy session in the chat, as well as um, uh, go ahead and enroll in the April 9th experience. And um, okay, so um, and Karen Hirsch, she asked a great question. Are you using strobes or continuous lighting on your shoots, or do you rely on reflectors for the most part? Uh, so great question, Karen. So um, we uh, use large-scale productions. So oftentimes we're either using um, pro photo lights uh, with beauty dishes um, and reflectors, um, uh, seven inch reflectors and beauty dishes primarily with our pro photo um, lighting equipment for our fashion shoots. Uh, if we're shooting stuff with lifestyle, like we just did last week, it's really heavy with eight by eight foot giant bounces and scrims. So oftentimes we'll scrim and bounce. Um, so uh, that's putting up a giant eight by eight scrim overhead, scrimming the sunlight, and then putting in an eight by eight foot bounce, just like I do on a movie set. So that's the type of lighting that we use, Karen. Uh, but just it completely depends on the specific workshop uh, that you're going to be going to, because each one is totally, totally different. Um, so if you guys uh, are interested in any of this, um, I encourage you to click on the links in the chat. And, um, and I really am excited to working with you um, to help achieve 
the greatest success of your photographic career uh, because I want you guys to be the best versions of yourself as photographers and also as master retouchers because that's what this is all about is to be um, the best version of yourself and to become an absolute world-class photographer. And, um, and I did have um, some photographers ask, um, let's look at the before and after. And um, so I think that um, uh, it would be a great opportunity to kind of go back to see um, what we did um, through the, um, uh, you know, through our uh, retouching and, um, and we can actually go through and showcase um, from um, the, uh, uh, all of the different techniques that we've done um, to see what it looks like at the very, very end. And, um, and it's, it's subtle. So, I mean, it's very subtle, uh, but, uh, but I, I did want to showcase this to you guys because we spent a lot of time working on this image. And um, if we go back to this image, um, this is the original image and that's the retouch version. So original image and retouched. And I'll zoom in even to the face. And, you know, she's already gorgeous out of camera anyway, but it does make a big difference with the retouching. Still natural, still authentic, still real, but clean. Yeah. All right, guys. Um, so great questions. And um, I cannot wait. Uh, to work with you guys um, to um, achieve your success. So make sure to click on those links in the chat if you haven't already. And um, I will, uh, and also um, uh, Sharon, you had a question. Um, absolutely, you can go if you wanna see all the details for the retitching workshop. Um, it can be found on our website um, at photographyworkshopseries.com. And, um, and I will put that link in here. And, um, and if you go and you click on workshops, you go down to masterclass and retouching April 9th, that will showcase uh, everything. So um, I uh, um, encourage you to do that. And if you want to um, join it, that is an amazing experience. I strongly recommend, uh, but please do as much research on me as you'd like. Um, and uh, we, um, uh, we will showcase here, I'll actually show you the website so that you can see um, this is the, uh, the page. So if you go to workshops, it's on the masterclass and retouching workshop and all the information's right here. So that you guys can see. So, um, so yeah, so if you wanna do that and you wanna jump in and join, um, right now it's that limited opportunity to enroll with a $300 discount. Normally it's 12.95, but you can get in for 9.95. All right, guys, I hope you had an absolute wonderful time here with me. I love doing this. I love going over retouching and I love working with each and every one of you. Um, and I love answering your questions. Um, I uh, can't wait to work with you in the future. So um, I hope you guys have an amazing day and um, I look forward to seeing you um, at the retouching workshop. And we're going to create an unbelievable masterclass um, for uh, retouching and to show you all aspects of retouching for every different type of photography. Take care, guys.